go. All right. Today I'm going to show you how to just set up a basic nymphing rig. And as a fly shop owner, I shouldn't say this, and don't tell my manager I said this, but I save all these old leaders that you chew back and chew back and chew back. You can go buy a brand new one, but I like a lot of knots in my leader for nymphs. So I'll just save this one here. I've got about three or four feet left on it. And it has a nice stiff butt section, which is good. It'll turn over the, uh, the nymphs pretty well. But then it tapers down. Right now it's probably chopped off to about odd, odd X or something like that. So I'm going to want my base of the, uh, the nymph rig. For me, I want the base to be about probably six to eight feet to my weight um, from the end of the fly line. So I'm going to get some tippet out here. And although I'm not going to be um, using 1x, that'd be a little heavy for what I'm going to do today, but I want to keep this nice and stiff and it'll sink pretty fast. This is going to sink a little faster than if it was tapered. So if I kept a regular tapered leader in it and a real long taper, it's not going to sink as fast. The more tippet I can put on my rig, the better off it's going to be. It's going to sink much quicker. So I'm going to about double the length of what I had left there and I'm going to snip a little of that on. I'm just going to tie that on with a uh, double surgeons, triple surgeons, probably better. And lay these right next to each other the way I want it to end up. And just like tying my shoe, I'm going to do this three times. One, two, and three. Pull that all the way in. Lick it like any good surgeon would. Pull those down nice and tight. And I'm going to tighten those up, and I like to snip those knots down nice and close. All right, test my knot, make sure it's okay. Now I'm up to about five or six feet to my next knot. And what this is going to allow me to do is move my indicator up and down through this section. If it's too thin in here, it has a tendency to slip. But now I can move my indicator back and forth depending on how deep of a run I'm fishing. Next I'm going to go down, I'm going to drop this back down to about 2x. And I'm just going to put on just a couple feet of 2x onto here. So I'm essentially building up a tapered leader. Same deal, just put a little surgeon's knot on that. One, two, three. Lick your knot, tug it up, snip, snip, and we're good to go. We're from the tapered section down to 1x, down to 2x. That's looking pretty sweet. Now I'm going to think about putting my bugs on. So I'm going to put a little bit of 3x on here. The reason I like this knot in here is if I have to, I can always put a weight above that if I want to keep it off the bottom a little bit further. And that's why I kind of like knots. We'll pull some 3x off here. I just keep edging down. That way if I break off, I don't lose my whole system. I just start breaking up from the bottom up. I'm going to pull off just a little bit of the 3x, maybe 15 inches or so. And same thing. I'm just building this up. Another surgeon's knot. Maybe. Here we go. Make sure it's nice and tight. And we'll clip them down. Do we need a bug. It's time of year. We'll go with the uh, standard. This is the Montana Happy Mill. We'll put a little rubber leg stonefly on it looking thing. Marvin, turd, whatever you want to call it. Probably medium size. About like this. Just a standard improved clinch. Seven turns back through. 
back through the one you just made. Lick your knot. Snip. Now I'm going to go down one more size, down to 4x. So I'm at 3 and 4 for my bugs. And about the same distance. We're not going to put too much between the two. Maybe about 15 inches at the maximum. I'm going to put that right on the bend of the hook. Like this. And I'm just going to do the improved clench right on the bend of the hook. Just as though I was tying it on the eye of the fly. So now we have a nice system. Goes in the in the nymph, out the other end, and we're going to put our second fly on here, which what else would you put on in the winter besides the worm? which my son told me a few minutes ago was the, the best fly ever made. And we're going to do the same thing with that. We're just going to do an improved clinch on it. Sweet. Snip. So here we have, we've got a little dropper your main fly, your lead fly, then I've got a knot here, I can put a split shot above, I'm going to run it up here, hey barley, then I can put indicator, I like it above that other knot to start with, this is a pretty good distance right here I'd say, got about, yep, six feet to the top fly, I can fold this thick part of the leader over, the old thingamabobber, take it over the top, and it's heavy enough in this section, that's probably going to hold our position right there. Now I'll start in a run. I'll see if this is going to be enough weight. This is a weighted fly with a heavy beaded uh, worm behind it, so it'll probably get deep enough. If it doesn't, I can always put a little split shot right above this knot so it doesn't slip down. And if I go into some real shallow water, I can start moving this indicator back further down, closer to my flies. If I go into deep water, I'll move it back up here closer to the fly line simple as that. I think we better go catch some fish. <laughs>